This podcast may contain adult themes and triggering topics. Please be kind to yourself if you get triggered by what we discuss. Also, this isn't a substitute for therapy or counseling. Please listen to the appendix at the end for some of our recommendations for resources that will help you find a qualified mental health care provider. Now, we take you to a time in the near future where emotional abuse has been appropriately deemed a crime and the survivors find a home to reclaim their lives and freedom. This is Haven, and these are the stories of the Reclaimers. Percy, can I come in? Yes. <laughs> come on in, Trip. Hey, a Trip. Hey, Dana. Good to see you. You too. Are you all moved in? Yeah, my wife got us set up when I first arrived. I bet it was pretty quick with Addie needing you right away. It was. I felt bad leaving her, but Percy sent some people to help her out. I uh, technically did. Dana sent some people. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm now Percy's official chief of staff. Dana, that's great news. <laughs> lucky, Percy. Very, very lucky to have you both. Addie told me that training is going well with your Operation Genius at the helm trip. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear she's happy. I asked you both here today because... I have some assignments to hand out. (laughs) Ready, boss. (laughs) Trip, I need you to lead a couple of groups now that you're back. Are you up for that? Leading groups? Like therapy groups? Uh, No, I'd like you to lead a survivor group. Survivor groups at the Haven are a little different than our therapy groups. They're more like classes or book clubs. I need someone who can do the work to plan a lesson from the Haven intake book and then use their incredible teaching ability to lead a discussion about the lesson. Teaching? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that, <laughs> for sure. I thought you'd be able to handle that. Which groups? There are a few from the Witness Protection, so you'll need to lead those at the High Security Haven, Haven 3. On it. Happy to. There's one more. Yeah? Well, there's a group of survivors here at Haven 1. It's um, all of us survivors of the former senator. Oh, uh, Yeah. Typically in survivor groups, we have a facilitator, but there's some security clearance issues and... You don't have staff to spare right now. Yeah, how'd you know? Addie told me that training was going well, but you were still sending people from Haven 1 to all the others. Yes, I admit with some joy. I never saw this particular problem as part of my future during the inquiry. (laughs) It's a good problem to have. Mm. Too many fully funded Havens? I agree, and I'm happy to lead the group. In fact, I... It'd give me something to focus on while... Oh, that. We can talk about it in front of Dana. I I think she feels the same. The same? I've had some anxiety since I found out Percy was a telepath. Oh, yeah, for sure. I felt the same at first. I'm sorry I kept it from you before. I know why you did. I know how our abuser operates, and I get it. He just... You don't have to explain, Trip. It takes time to get used to the telepathy. Even Feeney struggled at first. I know I need to earn that trust. The whole KH thing made it seem like... Like you wanted to help her while she was having a cardiac arrest. Yes. I don't distrust you. I I just need time to let my anxiety get to know your gift is something that can help. That's more than fair. Take all the time you need. Are you doing the calm wave thing right now? Mm. No, that's me. Oh, hey. Good range. Thanks. All right. I'm good with group. And Percy, it's okay. Maybe spending time in group together will help us develop that trust. Okay, because I can ask Addie. Like she has time. No, I'm good. Someone taught me a long time ago that boundaries are meant to help connect people, not divide them. I promise to tell you if I'm not okay. Deal? Deal. I appreciate that more than I can say. I'm going to head over to meet my kids. They wanted to see what Dion was up to. I love it. Say hi to Addie. Of course. I'll get with your chief here to uh, schedule some times. Thanks, Trip. Oh, hey, one last question. Of course. The survivor, Reed? Oh, yes. Do you talk with him? We've talked a little. This morning, Reed asked for clearance to read his father's journals. Oh. Everything okay? Max Sr.'s journals are part of the former senator's files. You know what? Yes. Let Reed have access. Topher redacted the classified stuff just a few months ago. Just, um, I'll check, check with Topher to, to see if we can have, have coalition, coalition clearance to share it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do that. I'll leave Thank you, you two to finish whatever that was. Uh, good to see you both. Thanks, Trip. 
Glad to be here. Glad to have you. I had just sent him some times that would work for your schedule, and I sent the same to Ben, Helena, Reed, and Alcorn. Yes, I'll ensure I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the telepath again? Hey, we all have our gifts. Yours is reading my mind without reading my mind? I just know what makes your world tick. Good. Because I have a classified matter to hand to you. Coalition stuff? No, this is um, tricky balancing act stuff. Okay. I'm... I got a package from someone I shouldn't have gotten a package from. Who? Actually... I'm not sure it was from our abuser. He sent you a package? Well, it's been a year since he started rehab, so now his estate will start to be auctioned off. But it would be illegal for him to send you something. As your abuser, that could be construed as a Hoover attempt. I'm aware of the law. Oh, I guess you would be. You wrote it. (laughs) Technically, Alcorn and Dalton wrote it, but I originated the intent of the law, yes. You look confused. I just don't know who sent this package. If it was him, that's a serious violation, but I can't imagine how he got through the security checks on the system. So I have to assume it was either an oversight or... That's not really a thought I can entertain just yet. What was in the package? I need to verify before I go down this path, so if you will, I need you to send the package to the president's office. Like the president president? Yes, of the United States. The contents of the package are classified. Highest security clearance, so I need you to send it without opening it. I've also included a verified digidoc with my explanation and a request. I need you to send all of it to her and ensure it gets put directly in her hands and no one else's. Feel free to go through Wesley if necessary. Or Topher? No, uh... No Topher or Feeney or even Alcorn. This is too sensitive. All right, I'll make sure it's done. Wait, am I okay to know about this? To know about the package itself? Yes. To know what's in it? No. That's why I imprinted. That should keep you safe. Safe? Should I be worried? No. Once I have the answer from the president, I can decide what to do from there. All right, boss. Consider it done. Thanks, Dana. Now, can we go over what Topher plans to serve at the Coalition dinner? He said you'd be worried about it. That's why he got Chef Miller involved. Oh, good. I was worried we were going to have corn fritters and chicken fried veggie steak. (laughs) That actually (laughs) sounds delicious. I know. Dang Texans. We're so glad to have you at the Haven Judge Day. Please, call me Nina. (laughs) Nina, of course. Where do you need me? Where can I start? Well, I have a somewhat uh, unique... Well, that is to say, with your background and your particular set of skills, I need you focused on a single survivor right now. Just one? It's not about your skill set. It's that this... um, Well, she's a bit of a challenge. And she comes with an overwhelming history... And we've struggled to find... Dr. Colossi? Uh, Yes. How many Advos has she been through? None. Well, me, sort of. I just need to give you a, a bit of... I'm getting the bundle. Could we pause for a minute to focus on what you're feeling? That's kind. It's not that I don't need to talk. I do... I just have an Advo of my own that I want to hold off talking about everything until I speak with her again. Of course. I understand. I just noticed that there's a lot of frustration when you talk about this. Yes. I'm still working through all of my feelings from what Percy went through and how it affected her. Us. How it affected us both. Part of the fallout of everything is realizing that Percy is a telepath. You weren't aware? I was. (laughs) The world at large was not. And while telepathy is growing in acceptance, Percy's gift makes her a somewhat uh, challenging survivor to work with. She can read your thoughts, she can read your emotions, and even if you keep those behind your line of consent, she's got this prescience that's unsettling. And worse, she's participated in researching and then authoring every curricula we've created for all of the Havens, 
She knows everything about everyone and everything about almost every topic. I see. It's not that the advos we've sought don't want to help her. It's that we need a rare combination of supervisory, advocacy, and... Uh... Willing to put up with a pain in the ass know-it-all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I know you have a background on the supervisory side. I know you have the necessary procedural understanding to report back to the Senate committee. Yes. Amelia is a good friend. I'd be happy to work with her on this. There's also the Security Council here at the Haven. They expect twice-monthly updates. Those are annotated recordings of sessions along with your monthly recommendations. They want to make sure Percy is on the right track. And with her blocks, they're, well, they struggle to read her, so they're counting on the Advo to regularly affirm her progress. So you need someone to work with her in an almost therapeutic capacity here. Old school? Yes. And, well, Topher said he'd spoken with you? Yes. I'm aware of the Global Alliance. He gave me clearance. You can speak freely. Oh, thank you. Uh, Topher isn't concerned about Percy so much as he needs to give her a chance to prove herself. Telepaths don't have a great track record because... I know Percy's history from judging her abuser's trial, but I think there's something you're trying not to say. Everything we discuss here is completely confidential. There are dimensions to her experience that are atypical because of her telepathy and the testing. I'll read up. Maybe some recent papers about heightened testing trauma? Yes. And there's more. I feel wrong talking about Percy like this. I dislike handling her. You're an advocate first. I hear that. Okay, good. Thank you. I don't have research or data to back this part up. I only have anecdotal experience. Percy has trauma, yes. But I've also seen how the telepathy affected her day to day. It seems like this big, wonderful gift that gave her tons of insight. But there's a lot of bias against her when she reveals she has this ability. And I... I didn't sense this, but... I've known her long enough to know. She's concealing a deep fear related to finding an Advo. At first, she came to every interview Jeanette and I conducted, and we only spoke with a handful of people at the Haven before we all realized how difficult it would be to find someone who has the level of experience Percy needs. All right. So, to summarize, Percy's faced a lot of rejection because of her telepathy, and this search for an Advo has only made that fear of rejection worse. Yes. Good summary. But it's not about rejecting Percy because of her gift. It's more about the complexity of supervisory requirements coupled with a know-it-all affect. Scared off the ones eager to work with her telepathy? Yes. Hmm. When do I start? <laughs> oh, the VidCon in your office will give you access to her calendar. Oh, having this resolved, I, I just... Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Happy to help. I'm going to need Percy's case file. Ah, uh, yes. That's sort of the other reason that I wanted to talk with you. Oh, no. Yeah. Percy's case file belongs to the War Crimes Tribunal. Topher's been able to get the recordings of her training sessions, so you can have those with Percy's permission. But all of the other notes, they're stuck in the classified inquiries. Including her abuser's notes? Uh, yes, sadly. Topher hasn't been able to get any of that for us. What about your notes? You're her original advo. Of course. I can send you everything. I'll take it. Thank you. And I'll work on getting her abuser's notes. I have a few friends in high places. I can be quite persuasive when given the chance. Thank you. I know this wasn't what you had in mind, working with survivors. It's good. I don't mind research. True. With a psych and law background, I don't think I can compete with that amount of research. <sighs> okay, good. Dana can provide you with anything else you'll need. Where is Percy now? She's uh, in the Ruby Lodge with a survivor group. Does she know you were going to ask me? Yes. Confirm for her that I've accepted without reservations. Time to start rebuilding after all that rejection. This means a lot to both of us. I'm getting how much it means to you. And that relief is a big part of why I wanted to go back to clinical practice. Oh, wonderful. Topher said he'd be glad to meet with you whenever you're available. Maybe I'll head over to his office then. Oh, good. I just sent my case notes to your VidCon. Feeney? Yeah? 
This is good. It's going to be good for both of you. I hope so. All right, I'll let you get on with your day. Brilliant. Percy? <gasps> Rosie, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in ages. Where have you been keeping yourself? Addie has been traveling a lot with training the staff for the New Havens. Since I didn't have director responsibilities, I was traveling with her. Ooh, now you're back? I am. And not just back. You're co-director again. Did I hear that <laughs> right? You did. That's right. <laughs> Are you happy? Incandescently so. That explains why Feeney was so happy in session. You're coming from session with him? Yes. We were talking about me transitioning to non-residents. How do you feel about that? Percy, you can read me. Go ahead. If you're sure. Oh, I'm getting the excited nerves. <laughs> Rosie, that's wonderful. I'm thrilled for you. Congratulations. Where will you live? My daughter helped me find a little spot near Kingman Park. Oh, that's so lovely. Is your daughter still in Baltimore? Yes, so just a few minutes away. I can tell how happy that makes you. <laughs> yes. I'm sad to be leaving, but happy to have a reason to move on. Oh, Percy, I'm so grateful to both of you for all you've done to make the Haven possible. Watching the end of the inquiry, I, I realized that you took your pain and turned it into something that would help others. And I, I want to do that. I want to make things better in the world. You will, Rosie. I can feel it in my bones. You will. <laughs> Feeney said the same thing. <laughs> he is the goodest. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do without him. What? You don't have to do without him. I, I, I don't? I, I thought that once I went off-site, I had to get referred to an off-site advo. No. Feeney gets invested in his survivors. No way he'd refer you unless you wanted to or needed a different match. Did he say he planned to refer? No. Oh, dear. I think I may have worried him needlessly. Oh. I was just crying a whole lot over everything changing. I didn't realize. I'm, uh, oh, oh. I'm sorry to interrupt. Dr. Colossi? <gasps> Amelia! Uh, oh, my... Stars, your Senator Gold. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, have we have we met? No, I just followed the inquiry pretty closely, and then I read your book, and I'm I'm a huge fan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what are you doing here? I, mean, I, I I didn't I didn't mean that. I meant <laughs> now. How is it that I get to meet you here, <laughs> <laughs> Senator Amelia Gold? Pleased to introduce you to one of Haven's most caring survivors, Rosemary Thurman. Please, call me Amelia. <laughs> well, you can call me Rosie. What a lovely name, Rosie. I I'm so sorry to interrupt, Dr. Colossi. Amelia, please, you don't have to be so formal. I just wasn't sure if it was appropriate for others to call you Percy. Oh, yes, around here, everyone calls me Percy. I only ask for doctor when facing off with a gaslighting abuser on the stand. That was one of my favorite moments of the whole inquiry. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> no. How about that? I knew you two would get along. <laughs> All that mind reading. Us <laughs> non heightens don't even know what to do with it. You too? Yes, it took me a minute to get used to hanging out with all these gifted people. <laughs> oh, please. You have your own gifts, Amelia. Never met someone who could recite the entire Constitution with a mouthful of peanut butter. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this sounds like a story I need to hear. <laughs> but another time, I can tell you're here for business. Actually, I'm just arriving. I was hoping to find Percy right away. It's wonderful to see you. Can I help you get settled? No, I, I was eager to get started shadowing. My team took my bags to the Sunflower Lodge. Oh, that's where I'm staying. I just love sunflowers. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we really are going to be friends. I, I didn't want to interrupt, though. It looked like you two were deep in conversation. Please continue. I can wait in one of the arboretums. Not on your life. <laughs> Did you say you were here to shadow? Yes. Senator Alcorn was with the Haven from its inception. I don't have the history to know what I'm doing when I talk about best practices or the tools. Senator Everett suggested I come on over to learn in person. Said he'd gotten quite an education over the past year spending time here. <laughs> I've certainly learned a lot. Is that so? 
What's been the most helpful thing? Hmm. That knowledge is a tool. Knowledge. Oh, yes. Isn't that tool number one? That's right. Well done. <laughs> Have you been reading the intake materials? Yes. Phoenix sent over a list of things I could read. Mm -hmm. Feeny and his list. <laughs> <laughs> now that is something I know all about. <laughs> uh, but truly, you all go on ahead with your talk. I don't want to intrude. Oh, it's not intruding. I was just telling Percy that I felt a little anxious about leaving the Haven. You're leaving? I've been here for nearly three years and I'm ready. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. Rosie has been so diligent. She's worked so hard. It's so weird to call it work. In the beginning, it felt a little like running around in quicksand. And I do remember the days I felt so overwhelmed with emotion, I didn't feel like I could do anything but lay in the couch in Feeney's office and cry. Those days, it just felt like hanging on. How awful. I'm sad to hear about your pain. I had Feeney by my side the whole time. I knew I could count on him, and that made all the difference in the world for me. And you still have him. I'm just worried. What happens when I go? It won't be the same, and everything here is so comforting. Rosie, I think... Could I share a story? Of course. I just love Advo stories. <laughs> Rosie, you're adorable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, topic change. <laughs> Topic change? <laughs> yes, it's something Feeney taught me to say when I feel awkward accepting a compliment. <laughs> I like it. I'll have to give that a shot. <laughs> You're too wonderful for words. <laughs> Topic change. <laughs> ah, yes! Like that! <laughs> okay, now, for real. Tell me a story, Percy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned you liked the doctor moment during the inquiry. Oh, it was thrilling to see you put him in his place. Well, there's sort of another foundation to that. See... <clears throat> My abuser used to call me something I didn't want him to call me. What did he call you? Sefi. It was the name my grandmother used to call me, and no matter how many times I told him not to call me that, he did. So making him call you doctor? That must have been so empowering. You bet it was. <laughs> I thought it was so brave of you. He was walking a razor-thin line of manipulation during that session. Yes, <laughs> I have no idea how you did it. Well, that's thanks to Feeney. It is? Yes. Back at the beginning of grad school, Feeney couldn't figure out why I wasn't myself. I struggled to tell him about the abuse because at that time I didn't know it was abuse. So I started by telling him about the Sefi thing. He knew about my Gramsci and he knew how I felt about being called Sefi. So it was a way to ease into explaining what happened to me, what my abuser had done. I hadn't thought of that. What? How someone who was abused wouldn't even know they'd been abused. Mm. Oh. What? That was sort of where I was when I first came to the Haven. It sounds like it's something many survivors understand. It is. In fact, it's one of the hallmarks of manipulated attachment. Deception is part of the abuse. That makes sense. What happened after you told Feeney about the name? He started calling me Percy at the beginning of every single sentence. Every sentence? Yes. <laughs> that was actually the early development of the mantra tool. How so? Well, him saying my name over and over in conversation helped me start using it too. Have you ever noticed that he uses your name a lot when you're distressed? Oh my goodness. I never thought it had a reason. I thought he was just being sweet. Oh, he's, he's being sweet. He's also being an advo. Using someone's name reminds them that they're seen. That's a subtle way to use the conditioning of an abuser against the abuser. The survivor becomes the focus, and that's vital. Oh, that's right. Tool number 10, refocus to reclaim. That's right, Rosie. You just used my name. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. And Feeney still uses my name anytime he wants to remind me that he's there for me, that I'm safe, and that he truly knows me. Oh, right. Rosie, how many times did he use your name in session today? More than a lot. Yeah. He will never, ever stop being your advo. He's one of the most loyal, dedicated people I've ever met. But let's not stop there. Rosie, it's not just about him. It's about the Haven. We just got funding. 
permanent funding. And we have so much support from all the committees and coalitions that can make sure we keep that funding. I have the privilege of telling you that the Haven, all of them, they're here to stay. And Rosie, so are you. You're here to stay. You get to have you back. You get to reclaim Rosemary and take her with you on every single adventure you'll have ever again from now on. Your brain, your heart, you. You have you. That's the best possible thing I can think of for you to focus on now. Percy? <laughs> did you just use my name? <laughs> you bet I did. I'm going to call everyone by their name all the time now. I'll be that kooky nurse that says people's names all the time. Oh my goodness, my kids. I'm just going to start sending them VidCons all day just saying their names. <laughs> well, see, you're a lovely human. And I believe in you. Percy, I feel better. <laughs> much better. I'm going to go call my daughter. Thank you so, so much. Good to meet you, Rosie. And you, Amelia. <laughs> Percy, see you again soon. Wow. Do you always pack so many tools in one conversation? Mm. Rosie's pretty experienced. It's easy to share things with those that have been here a while. Do you mind if I record conversations? I won't share it outside my own knowledge base. I just want to be sure I'm keeping track of everything. Yes. I, I can't speak for Topher or any of the witness protection survivors, but with just me, go right ahead. Hey, you hungry? Starved. Let's go see what Chef Miller made for lunch. Mm. Hey, it's Percy and Feeney here. What you've just heard is a work of fiction, but we know that many listeners are living in a world of pain that isn't fictional at all. At the end of every episode, we're going to include an appendix of sorts, some things we hope will serve those who live with a reality of fear and pain every day. First, we want to let you know about our website, www.empowering.tools, where we keep an ongoing list of books, websites, hotlines, and many other resources for victims and survivors of toxic relationships. Second, we love to hear from you. If you'd like to share your story with us or let us know how the episode impacted you, we'd love for you to reach out. These are deeply emotional things, and we want to give you a chance to share. We're a small team, so an in-depth response isn't always possible, but we do read every message we receive. Third, if you're in crisis or you need to find an immediate way out, please call 800 799 7233 for the National Domestic Abuse Hotline. If your abuser is a parent or a non-romantic relationship, there are other resources we've listed on the website that are just for you. A reminder, emotional violence is still violence. You don't need to have bruises on your body to deserve help, and it's okay to feel what you're feeling when you call. Fourth, be safe. For some, getting out will take planning and time. If you know you need help, do what you need in order to safely get away. Lastly, we know how difficult it can be to believe there's hope on the other side of a toxic relationship. Many on our team know the devastatingly difficult steps it takes to get away from an abusive predator. But there is hope. You don't have to do it alone. If you don't have supportive family or friends, you can still find support at the hotlines we mentioned earlier or at a local hospital or shelter. Thousands of survivors have made it out. Getting out and reclaiming your freedom can be your story. We believe in you. We believe in your future. And, and we, we believe, believe in your right to that freedom. freedom.